Hi, I'm Marcus, and I'm here on behalf of Fracture Sounds to compare their five main piano libraries. I'm going to start by playing them on their own one after the other so you get a sense of what they sound like side by side. And then what I've actually done is I've written some little contextual pieces of music which will hopefully demonstrate some potential use cases for them as well as show you what they sound like with other instruments as well. And hopefully this will help you come to a decision on which is best for your project. I suppose the first thing I probably want to address is why you might need or want five piano libraries. Uh, to which I would say, kind of like casting for a movie or a TV show, the tone and the audience that you're aiming towards is going to make a massive impact on which actors and actresses you choose to fill the job. Just because a role for one movie might be quite similar to another on the surface level doesn't necessarily mean that the same actor is going to be able to pull it off in both cases, and hopefully this will become evident when I play the pieces for you later. But anyway, before I take up any more of your time, I'm going to have a quick noodle on the piano, starting with the Spotlight Grand, which is Fracture Sound's brand new flagship, and also my personal favourite. So. So that was just the standard balanced patch which loads when you open the instrument for the first time. But Fracture Sounds are really aiming for a very emotive, introspective piano sound, which means that the presets they've provided uh, to alter the colour and the timbre do kind of play into that more, such as this preset called Rose Petals, which uh, is inspired by a couple of soundtracks. I'm not going to mention which one, although I'm sure you could probably guess. I also think it's very good for this. They've also provided a very excellent response feature which changes the piano's reaction to different velocities. So for instance, in presets like this faux felt here, you can see it's kind of been uh, limited somewhat to recreate the sound of the Celeste pedal being engaged on an upright. Now, that does do a very remarkable job. However, going back to what I was saying earlier, um, nothing does a job quite as well as the real thing. This is the Woodchester piano, and naturally this is a quieter sound, less dynamic range, but a level of intimacy that I just think you cannot recreate. Not to mention some fantastic atmospheric layers, but I will get into those later on in the video. You also have this fader here to control the amount of noise from the pianist. So you hear these like little creaks and stuff. I have no idea why you would want this at 100, because... <laughs> Whoever's at the back, can you please stop making so much noise, please? Thank you. So next we have the Midnight Grand, which is intended for more darker and cinematic scoring. And in my opinion, it does cut through a mix very well. Like through the rest of an orchestra, you can hear the sound of the felt really nicely, which I like. Um, but also you have the colour wheel here, which allows you to make it darker or brighter, depending on what you need from it. Uh, so let me just set that to zero to start with and turn down all this atmosphere.
and to demonstrate just how much the colour changes from one preset to another. Here it is all the way at dark. And then all the way at bright. And then the rest of the controls are kind of the same similar ones. You also have the option to bring up the rune tone here, which is quite nice for that sort of... Yeah, again, just to add a bit more realism into the performance. A personal favourite of mine, the next one, is Glacier Keys, which to me has a really beautiful tone, which does do as the name implies, I'm not going to lie. Yeah, I do think this is a terrific sound, and I personally love putting the colour down like this, bringing it close, and this almost sounds to me a bit like a zither of some kind. It comes not only with all of these settings, like usual, and also the atmospheric layers, but also some great presets, my personal favourite being Forgotten Voices. Yeah, Fracture Sounds definitely know how to do a good drone. Finally, we have Dulciano, which is one of Fracture Sounds' more recent additions, a concert-sized grand piano which has been played with dulcimer hammers, um, leading to a very folky fantasy genre-like sound. Firstly, I've got to say, all of these libraries have got this flipping perspective slider, and my god, did I not wish that all libraries had it, because it's just like so easy to just go flip like that. I really do like the way that it sounds close mic'd. And uh, obviously I can change the colour. So that was a brief overview of all of the pianos, but obviously if you want to hear any of them more extensively, they each have their own individual videos on the Fracture Sounds channel. But now I'm going to play them in context with some other instruments. And to go back to what I was saying about casting earlier, I'm not one of those composers that can do a massively broad range of styles and genres. I have a sound that I've developed over the kind of past 12 years of writing music, and when I'm writing, especially if I'm writing very quickly, I have a set of tools and techniques that I fall back on pretty regularly. So these pieces aren't going to sound massively different to each other. And so as a result, I think the actual differences of the libraries, you know, I've tried to write to their strengths, obviously, but the difference in the sound of the libraries is really going to shine through. Um, so yes, I'm going to start in the same order by playing you my piece for the Spotlight Piano.
Alright, so hopefully you can hear that I did more of a kind of pop ballad, slightly brighter style, which I think this library is very good at doing, as well as the more Thomas Newman subdued kind of thing. I used this Atmos layer here. Under the submenus, the real strength of this library is that it does have a whole bunch of fantastic sounds that you can choose between and mix up to four of them at a time. For this Atmos layer, I chose Foray. something kind of like a little bit of grit to it which I really like and then I layered this up with glow now the two of them together make this rather nice sounding as par for the course and you'll hear this with pretty much all the other pieces of music basic sort of string writing a couple of extra instruments here and there sub bass and a tiny bit of percussion I did have more instruments originally when I wrote it but uh, it ended up being a bit too on the nose, brought it down to par so that the piano has a chance to really cut through the mix. The next piece is for the Woodchester piano. So for this, I think the Woodchester piano is unique in just how straight out of the box it is. It sounds marvellous. I think I literally left everything on its default settings and layered it up with this little rhythmic bit, which I added a bit of EQ to, uh, not gonna lie, then the tremolo plug-in to have it pan from side to side. But as for the sound itself, uh, I turned the colour down and that was pretty much all I had to do to create this very lovely little... I just... Wherever I get the chance to, rather than use like a hi-hat patch or a shaker patch, I'll try and find something like this to put in, just because there's so many other little sounds going on in these recordings that make them just feel way more organic. And um, yeah, I think organic is probably the word to describe this library, honestly. It's uh, a really lovely experience to play. The one chief difference in the orchestration between this and the first piece is that I actually included some solo strings here, just for a little bit more of an intimate Olafur Arnolds-like sound. So I've got this Atmos layer here where I've literally, all I've done is just turn the raw piano off and the rest of them up to full. In my personal opinion, this library has the best reversed piano uh, that I've heard. And I'm a sucker for a reversed piano, so I've heard a lot. But if I just mute these two other atmosphere patches, you can hear what I mean, I think. You know, they've given these Atmos layers these names and, you know, whether or not that suits your personal taste. But I do say that when I play these, I feel a bit like I am flying. Yeah, lovely stuff. Moving on.
Okay, she will be gone. I'm going to need you to sit back down. <laughs> Most of it is self-explanatory. I'll just talk you through a couple of the layers with the Midnight Grand here. Uh, I used Atmos for this track, which was literally just Eclipse, because I found that the sound of that was just... Again, I don't know what it is about reverse pianos, I just think they sound really nice. I'm fairly certain with the uh, main piano, I left the colour as it was. I felt like... It has just that right amount of felt sizzle. I don't really know what the word for it is, but you know, the sort of when the hammers hit, you get that nice sort of little <laughs> that really cuts through the mix and I really like. And then finally, on the top layer, I turn the brightness all the way up and the atmosphere intensity and all of that to make a sort of pad and a rhythmic texture. I just love with the triplets. I mean, there was a lot of fifths going on, and I'm not gonna lie, I think I played that in once and just hit quantize and then was done with it, but you know, one quarter delay is your friend. Just, <laughs> you gotta write something quickly, just get that one quarter delay on anything and it's gonna be fine, absolutely fine. Okay. I think if I had to choose a favourite Atmos layer from all of the libraries, Glacier Keys would have it. You know, it does stay true to its name, it is extremely sparkly and extremely pleasant to listen to, and as you can hear, um, I'm able to direct it quite well, like it's quite responsive, so at the very end I just have the Atmos do this little... makes a great alternative to having just a triangle, uh, so worth bearing in mind. One thing about this library is, I think I mentioned this before, but I love to have it very close. Colour turned down uh, to make it darker. And then for this layer here, again with the ostinatos and the drones, uh, you remember when I said that I have my fallback techniques? And yeah, this is what I'm talking about. So again, colour turned all the way down, very close this time. EQ and tremolo on it. And... Uh yeah, I'm a big fan of this sound. And then the rest of the orchestration is uh, pretty straightforward. I feel like bringing your attention to a tiny woodwind ostinato that I've got in the background. Which is basically the same as... And then the rest of it is, uh, yeah, just your, your bog standard, a cinematic brass and percussion. This, again, is one of those libraries that, from playing around with it, it's wonderful to put in a mix because it doesn't matter what orchestration it seems you do, it doesn't matter how thick the piece of music gets, you can still hear it, which is something that I very much appreciate. Last library to look at, and this time I really was trying to have just a bit of fun with writing it, and that's the Dulciano. Don't have a whole lot to say about it frankly but one thing that i will say about the dulciano is that it is something that is obviously much more of a kind of specific use case scenario and uh in this instance i found myself aside from doing my normal technique of putting in an ostinato or um whatever you would call this i guess 
complete with your usual delay and EQ. What I actually did in this instance was to mix it just a little bit more carefully. I divided the left and the right hands up. Basically, I just wanted to take the lower end of the keyboard and make it a little bit less powerful uh, so that it mixed in a way that was more pleasant to me, which means that if I put them together, you get quite what I think is a quite nice, lighter sound. And I think because these dulcimer hammers bring out a lot of mid-high range, uh, it cuts through a mix very easily. It doesn't need to be very loud at all. Um, but at any rate, um, very playable. It repeats notes really well as well. So yeah, a lot of fun. And as I'm actually working on an album where I'm doing a lot of folk and fantasy-inspired pieces of music, this is definitely going to come in useful. Uh, but I would say, regardless of what your specific use case is, um, choosing a piano library is a very personal decision, and no piano is going to be able to do absolutely every piece of music that you throw at it without fault. I would say if I had to choose a good all-rounder for everything, the Spotlight Piano is magnificent. But it does, in my opinion, sound like a grand piano. And if you want living room at 2am in the morning, the Woodchester piano or even the Midnight Grand is going to be able to do that more effectively. It's very important that you choose the one that is right for the project and is right for you. And um, yes, that is all pretty much I think I can offer in terms of advice for that. But hopefully now that I've shown you them, um, you're better informed to make that decision. So yeah, thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions or comments or general critiques about my general unprofessionalness please leave them down below and i will see you when i see you goodbye <laughs>